Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled, frightened, and thought they saw a ghost. Why are you troubled? Why do you have so many doubts in your hearts? See my hands, my feet, my side, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. Then he told them everything that was written about him in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms. And he opened their minds to understand. And then he told them to wait in the city until they were clothed with power from on high. Please be seated. Some things in life are... are I was going to say, some things in life are hard to take in. That was hard to take in. Um, for example, in the 16th century, Copernicus came up with the heliocentric theory of the universe, that the sun revolves around the earth. That was hard to take in. There are still some today who have their doubts and their questions about whether that is the correct way to understand the universe. Or in 1962, Neil Armstrong put his feet on the moon. That was hard to take in. Hard to believe, to see those pictures. Sometimes we want to see and touch and feel to be sure that something is true or not. And there are some people today who still doubt Neil actually walked on the moon. Then there are some tragic things that are hard to take in. I have a hard time taking in how our veterans come home from Iraq, the war, and 22 of them a day take their own life. That's just hard for me to understand. Hard to take in. Hard for me to see and, and touch and, and feel that. And then there were those high school kids in Florida who for six and a half minutes huddled in terror and fear as they heard shots ringing out and 17 of their friends were dead. That too is just hard for me to take in. Hard for me to believe. I kind of want to kind of see it and touch it and feel it. But then I don't want to. And some who do never recover from what they saw and felt and touched. It's just hard, hard to take in. Jesus had died. Some of his friends were terrified. What happened to him? What happened to us? It was hard for them to take that in. And then Jesus comes to them and says, Peace, shalom, well-being be to you. Harmony, wholeness. And I just couldn't take it in. It was too hard to understand. And he cooked them a meal. Touch and see and feel. Eat this fish with me. Believe. Work through your doubts. Have your doubts, but work through your doubts. Have your fears, but work through your fears. And everything that the disciples needed to hear from Jesus, the stories, the deeds he did, Everything that happened in the Gospel of Luke, and now all that's left is for them to understand, to work through their doubts, to work through their fears, to carry on the mission of God. And in the Gospel of Luke, one of the main pieces of cargo for the mission is peace. 
shalom, well-being, harmony, wholeness. Peace be to you, disciples, friends, Jesus said, peace be to you. Now, carry on the mission of peace. And how beautifully that mission was carried out in the Gospel of Luke. Zacharias sings that song about his son John being born. The day spring on high has come to visit us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our lives in the way of peace and shalom. And the angels sing of that peace when he's born. And Simeon gathers the child in his arms and says, Let your servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen and felt and touched your salvation. And now come some other stories in the Gospel of Luke about peace and shalom. In chapter 8, there's a woman who the Gospel of Luke says spent her livelihood on doctors and couldn't be healed. And in desperation, she comes as Jesus walks by and touches the hem, the hem of the garment. And immediately her health is restored. And Jesus turns around and asks, who touched me? Who touched my garment? And they all denied it. And then Peter, when he heard that, said, Jesus, there are all crowds and multitudes of people here. Anybody could have touched your garment. And the woman, knowing that she couldn't remain hidden, Luke says, came running to Jesus, trembling, and confessed, I, Lord, touched your garment. And he turned to her and said, Daughter of God, go in peace. Go in shalom. Go in wholeness. Go in harmony. Go in well-being. Now, a little bit later in the story, Jesus goes to have dinner at Simon's house, the Pharisee. And he's reclining at meal, and a woman in town who's known as a sinner hears that Jesus is at Simon's house. So she goes out and buys an alabaster jar of perfume and oil and comes into Simon's house and goes to where Jesus is reclining and goes to where his feet are, and she begins to weep. The tears are flowing from her eyes and they drop on the feet of Jesus. And she bends down and with her hair wipes the feet of Jesus, starts to kiss them, and then takes that expensive alabaster jar of oil and pours oil on the feet of Jesus. And Simon the Pharisee mutters to himself, if this man knew what kind of a woman she was, he would have nothing to do with her. And Luke says, Jesus heard Simon muttering to himself <laughs> and says, come here, Simon. I have a story to tell you. And Simon comes over. and Jesus says, there are two men. One owes a lender 50 pieces of silver and the other owes 500 pieces of silver and neither can repay the debt. And the lender forgives both their debts. Now, which of you, Simon, which man do you think, Simon, is going to be most appreciative and love that lender the most? And Simon said, the one who had the 500 pieces of silver forgiven. And Jesus said, Simon, you answered correctly. Now, here's what I want to tell you. When I came to your house, you did not give me a basin of water, as was customary in this dry climate, to wash my feet. But this woman has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. And Simon, when I came into your house, you did not give me oil for my head, as was customary in those dry climates, to put oil on the guest's head. You did not do that, Simon. But this woman has taken an expensive jar of oil and poured that on my feet. 
And Simon, when I came into your house, you did not greet me with a holy kiss, as was customary, but this woman, ever since I've come to your house, has not stopped kissing my feet. Simon, I tell you, this woman, though she sins, has sinned much, will be forgiven much because she loves much. And he turned to the woman and said, go in peace, shalom, well-being, wholeness, harmony. A little bit later in chapter 10, Jesus gathers his friends together, gathers his friends together and says, now go out on the mission. Go out on the mission. And the main cargo of the mission, go to the household, and when you're there, say, peace be to this house. Say, shalom be to this house. Say, well-being to this house. Say, wholeness to this house. Say, health to this house. And then we come to our story today. The disciples are huddled together in fear. They're having their doubts. And Jesus comes to them and says, peace, shalom. Think of the giver of peace and shalom when he was on the cross. The first word from the cross in the Gospel of Luke, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Jesus wants to give shalom and peace and well-being to those who put him on the cross. There were two thieves, the Gospel of Luke says, and one confessed and said, Jesus, remember me. And Jesus turned to him and said, today you will be in paradise. He wanted that person on the cross to experience peace, shalom, well-being, wholeness. Throughout the Gospel of Luke, the day spring from on high has come to visit his people to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide their lives in the way of peace. And now that day spring on high has come to you and me, has visited us with that same peace and shalom, the same forgiveness that he said to those who put him on the cross, the same paradise that he said to the person on the cross next to him. That paradise, that forgiveness is ours. That's our peace, our shalom, our well-being, our harmony. And now what's left is for you and me to understand that. To work through our doubts, to work through our questions, and to be on the mission of peace and well-being. Going to our neighbors, going to the people down the street, going to each other here, and doing and, and saying and doing peace, shalom, and well-being. Where it is possible. It's not always possible. And Jesus said that to his friends when he sent them out. It's not always possible. Sometimes you have to leave and go, and go somewhere else. But where it is possible, rejoice and celebrate that shalom and peace has been given. Rejoice and celebrate that the day spring on high has come to visit people today and to give light and darkness and the shadow of death and to guide people's lives in the way of shalom and peace. The power of the Spirit has come upon us. May we be instruments of that peace. In Jesus' name, amen.